What's up, guys, and welcome back to Beyond the Void Horror Podcast. That's right, we're back for episode 102, which is... Which is fitting, because today's August 2nd, so that's kind of cool. Ooh. Well, only because of the, the two No, this is happening real time, guys. We do it the day that it comes out. We're that good. Yeah. <laughs> I just, like, whip it out, like, real quick. Like it's dick. And that sounds really bad, yeah. <laughs> Jesus. I feel like I talk about dick in every episode. <laughs> you really do. Everybody's like, you're just, like, a sex freak. What's Somebody, I can't remember it who. It was Craig. I just saw it. You saw it? Yeah, yeah. He was, he like, was like, just watch Rare Exports. You'll get your fill of dick. And I'm like, I don't want old man dick, Craig. That was the point. <laughs> That was the point. Oh, you actually wrote him back about it? <laughs> no, I just, I hearted his comment. <laughs> Hi, Craig, I love you. By the way, guys, <laughs> today we're going to be talking about two movies that are not within the same realm of each other, but sort of are, I guess. The same thing. Yeah, it's about the same thing, just a different take on it, each one. Uh, we weren't really sure if they were connected at all when we first watched them, but we're watching The Boogeyman from 1980 and... Boogeyman from 2005. Booyah. So we sat down, watched these uh, films... <laughs> These heaping piles of flaming garbage <laughs> well, that are called there's, films. There's a couple of redeeming fun things about him, but we'll, <laughs> we'll talk about that in a little bit. So what's up with you? How's the week been going? Yeah, no, I'm good. I'm, I'm, I don't want to talk too much about what I did this week. Like one important thing that I did this week because I'm not trying to jinx myself. So oh, hopefully okay. next week I'll be able to talk about it so okay. we'll see i probably just fucked my life up by saying that you so. fucked it all up Brittany. Fucked her, it all up. send her some good vibes for the good news Do in the future it. hopefully i get it tomorrow yeah i have just been Ow, streaming and i've also been uh yeah i played some aliens games like i played aliens versus predator and i also played aliens colonial marines which is supposedly one of the worst games ever made for aliens That's a lot of people are yeah a lot of people are really upset it was pretty cool i tried it out with some mods and shit and it crashed because the mods weren't i did something wrong i think but we had fun we were laughing and playing that game so i decided to watch aliens the movie because i was so into it I love that movie. yeah dude i was like god damn there's like it's so many like, aliens in this still holds up so well it really is actually it's pretty so good and i always think that there's more aliens movies than there are i know but i mean there's six technically um but some people don't like to count resurrection or the last two <laughs> no but i think yeah, i don't know i mean i'm not a fan of the last two as much as some people are but i still have them I actually don't have Covenant. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I have the the Prometheus one. I loved Prometheus. I, I can honestly don't give a fuck what anybody has to say about it. Wow. Well, I loved that movie. Uh, that, I thought it was brilliant and beautiful. I think and... it's full of loopholes. And Well, yeah, uh, but okay. So you're. There's an extreme lack of, what is it? Uh, aliens in it? Well, kind of. I mean, I guess there's aliens, but not the aliens we Yeah, like. but that wasn't necessarily the point of the movie, though. Right. I know. I get it. They didn't market it necessarily but it, as but that. It, it takes place so, before right it's and a then but it's like advanced technology that's like past where yeah they're fucking it, you're right it is full of fucking loopholes all over which way but sorry it was great yeah. it was beautiful and i loved it yeah it was a good film it's okay but i don't know <laughs> so one thing that i am very excited about that did come about this week is today is officially the first day of football season uh -huh. <laughs> are you ready for some football 
Isn't that what they used to do? That's pretty great. Yeah, it was a good job. Now (laughs) it's like Carrie Underwood that does it or something. But is anybody still watching that now that they're all kneeling and stuff? Football? Shut up. (laughs) Yeah, I know. I was like, by saying this, I either just made people like me more. They killed football, guys. They killed football. They killed football. (laughs) Killed it. Don killed it. (laughs) Um, but my football husband got inducted into the hall of fame today so that was pretty dope oh. well it's technically saturday but they interviewed him today i didn't and he... even know you were into soccer fuck you <laughs> <laughs> um i love soccer too football? so you can suck a dick <laughs> um yeah no i'm obviously i'm into football you fuck i'm oh, wearing I a don't... fucking raiders shirt right now <laughs> i thought that was just a pirate i didn't know <laughs> <laughs> you mean that's not a pirate yeah. <laughs> like, oh but yeah no I love football. So like I said, I either just people like me more now because I said that or now they hate me for being like, yeah, oh. football. Because you guys are going to hear it for the next I couple I think girls months. can get away with that. But when a guy talks about it, they're just like, oh, God, here we go. No, I have people that fucking like talk some shit to me. And like constantly, like I got into it a couple times last year. I actually said something about it last season because it pissed me off. Because like all the po- like the posts that people make about like how they hate people that post about football and they like constantly like make fun of people like, right. that post about it. I'm just like, why? Like, I don't make fun of you for posting about how you fucking love Twilight. So leave me the <laughs> fuck alone. Like, let me love football. It's only like for a couple months out of the year. You and, and I your rarely... stupid Pokemon. Yeah, I'm like, I rarely post about it. Unlike you and your Pokemon Go every five fucking minutes. Like, <laughs> leave me alone. Yeah, and like, I, I don't remember what it was. It'll come up later this year, though. And on my on this day thing, it'll tell me what I said. But like, I said some fucking shit. Honest question, though. This always bugs me. I don't know why. I mean, are we really like so comfortable with life that all we have to complain about is what we have to scroll literally a millimeter with our thumb to get past something we don't want to see like that's exactly how i feel it's like guys like fuck and i think that's part of what i said i was like if you don't fucking like it and you don't care about it then then scroll scroll past it like who cares oh my god what an atrocity you did literally one brief little Flick I don't understand. Away. I don't even post about it that much. This is the equivalent of it. It's like driving down the road and yelling at the fucking bulletin boards or the, bu- <laughs> you know, like because they're up. Yeah. Like you're an idiot. Just fucking drive, Just drive past, past it. it. Move on with yeah. your life. <laughs> Look at some of the other things that Fuck. are in front of you. you you'll make it. I, I, I believe in you. Dicks. I like to walk down the street online and just bump into things you know i like to experience it virtually like as if i were walking down the street you know what i mean anyway uh (laughs) so i think it might be that time horse shots okay guys now we're gonna do our horror shots Obviously, what we do is make up horror shots themed around the movies that we watch each week. Um, So this week, we watched The Boogeyman from 1980, and we figured we'd pick something from that. Uh, In the movie, they talk about mirrors and how they capture the essence of something that happened. It sort of collects data like almost like a video camera and including the soul and the spirit and shit like that. Well, someone dies in the movie and it captures their soul. They get murdered uh, by a child. By a child. (laughs) And so we thought mirrors play a big part in this movie. So we kind of wanted to have something that would be around that. So... But we also wanted it to be Boogeyman. We were going to call it, what do we call it? Murder Mirror. Murder Mirror. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Or like Soul Stealer or something. But we decided on Boogie Berry. Boogie Berry. Yeah, Boogie Berry is... Love it. Actually, it sounds really delicious. It sounds like a cereal. We don't have it here because I'm still kind of like cleansing and stuff. I don't know. I haven't eaten vegetables. I've, all I've been doing is eating vegetables, I'm, dude. I'm currently drinking, so... Brittany's drinking. That. But I didn't get... I'm not drinking, so... Uh, but we have a delicious treat for you guys to take a horror shot to this week or this weekend. Oh, no, it sounds and it's, so good. It really does. So what is in a boogie berry? Well, a boogie berry has blended, preferably bl- blended, by the way, guys. I would say it's probably best to do this because you don't want to choke on it. I want you to choke on it. <laughs> you could probably mash them if you want to spend some extra time and just do it that way. But I honestly think you should just blend them mm-hmm. into a like a pulp or like juice. Uh, but you're going to blend about three or four blueberries into the bottom of your shot first. Then you're going to pour one part hypnotic because in the movie, it sort of hypnotizes them whenever they see the mirror and it like shines in their beaks. Uh, 
And then they got one part blue carousel and then one part Svedka mango pineapple because it just sounds goddamn delicious. Yeah, it does. Uh, so you mix them all together. Oh, and then some boogers. Yeah, and then you uh, pick your nose. Then you stare at the other person that you're drinking with, and you make their eyes bleed <laughs> and uh, their head bleed from the top. It's Perfect. pretty cool. I know. Like so, we'll get to that, but yeah. honestly, guys, I really think this is going to be a good shot. Yeah, I, I really we do try to make these like somewhat delicious. So if you do happen to try this, we'll give you a big shout out. Send us a video of you making this shot. And we'll give you a big shout out, share it on our social media and everything like that. So Alex will send you a picture of his butt. Yes. The uh just the whole part. That's not incentive. <laughs> then I don't know what is. He's Jesus. gonna show you his brown eye. <laughs> <laughs> but if you would like to try a boogie berry, all you have to do is go to longlivethevoid.com and check out our hashtag horse shot section now. now. Other than that, that's it for horse shots! All right, guys. Now, we were going to do some news this week, but uh, no, uh, we're going to probably be spinning a yarn about these movies. And, like, I don't know. What am I fucking 85? Right. Say, <laughs> show like... well, OK, well, Gene Wilkers. To you so too, we're going to be spinning a yarn I'm about these wonderful boogies. These boogie tales. While I knit something in the corner. But we're going to go ahead and jump into our flesh and potatoes of the boogeyman and boogeyman. We're back. What is the meaning of life? Shimmy down those pants and get ready for the two movies that are going inside. <laughs> Shimmy down those pants and bend on over. Yeah. <laughs> so Hurt them cheeks. We're going to start it off in chronological order of these movies that came out. So I picked. Fuck the, it. Let's go backwards. The Boogeyman. Never mind. The Boogeyman. That's what it sounds like. I feel like we should start with the other one first. No. Hell no. It doesn't have to be like the last one isn't always the best one. Uh, so fuck it. All right. Alex always wants to go in chronological order. I just want to introduce it. A it bothers. It's I'm like it's I'm like kind it of does. But you're all fucking crazy about it. I don't know why. It's just like, I don't know. It's OK. I get it. So the boogeyman, which is the space boogie space man <laughs> instead of boogeyman, which is the next movie, one which word. is one word. Yeah, uh, that came out in 1980. And the story is through the reflection in the mirror, a girl witnesses her mother's boyfriend's murder. Like, sort of? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, it's really, it's about a fucked up mother who lets her boyfriends abuse her children and they're dealing with the abuse years later through their own fucked up shit and something very dark uh, comes back to fuck with them. Oh, and uh, a bunch of mirrors and shit. Yeah. So it's a lot of broken glass right the movie was written and directed by the late german filmmaker uli lomel who passed away in 2017 of heart failure uh he died at the age of 72 that's a good age yeah lived a good life i hope i can live that long i want to so. live longer than that as long as i can still use the bathroom without shitting in my pants <laughs> jesus <laughs> i'm just saying <laughs> he, he uh he's actually known for the movies the devonsville terror which actually kind of looked at and uh kind of want to see now uh he also did boogeyman 2 which is just one word two uh kind of like the texas chainsaw massacre where they spread the chain and saw apart it's so stupid i don't know why i guess it's just like they weren't Except thinking it's nothing like the texas chainsaw but, massacre but too, you know what i mean i mean as far as that like was actually good spread apart like <laughs> yeah, the words yeah. it's weird yeah they I also never understand that he also did brain waves zombie nation btk killer uh the tenderness of wolves uh which is actually the english translation of the german name and many more he's actually a pretty seasoned actor as well he's done a lot of acting since the age of four uh because of his father was a famous comedian so he's always kind of been a part of that show kind of thing so uli did more than just directing acting and writing he did a lot with cinematography production composing like he's just been a part of film since 
a la young age. That's awesome. It was also helped written by Suzanne Love, who also starred in the film as Lacey. She was in Boogeyman 2, Hair, Cocaine Cowboys, and Strangers in Paradise. <laughs> Hair cocaine. Yeah. All right, see what you were doing. <laughs> Hair cocaine. <laughs> 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 also, it was written by David Herschel, which uh, this is pretty much his only credit. So also the music in the movie is by Tim Krog, who did the whole musical score, which I believe they reused the same score in the direct sequel called Boogeyman 2, uh, 1983, by the way. Dope. Uh, some of the cast, aside from Suzanne Love, who I think her brother was in this film, I'm assuming, as a way to probably keep the, the family close. <laughs> like, because there's a brother and a sister in this story who see the murder or see the, the mother having sex or something like that in the window in the beginning. So I feel like maybe he chose like real sister and brother actors to try to star in this. I'm not 100% sure. I tried looking it up. I didn't find anything. Mm -hmm. So. But his her brother or somebody that she's probably related to is Nicholas Love. He was Willie, or as I like to call Silent Willie. Uh, he was in the movie Wild at Heart, one of my favorite uh, David Lynch films. The Deadpool, Twin Peaks as Malcolm Sloan. He was also in Jennifer 8, Brainwaves, Strangers in Paradise, plus a few Skinamax sort of flicks. Oh, yeah. I think it was like the Red Shoe Diaries or Perfect. something. Uh, it also has no penis. <laughs> <laughs> oh, lots of penis, just like dick everywhere. No, I'm and kidding. Skinamax movies? No, no, no. It's not. just titties. It's just and tits bush. and ass. Tits, ass, and bush. Anyway, continue. <laughs> John Carradine is also in this movie. He I plays Doctor Warren, which I I kind of wondered if it was like a nod to Ed and Lorraine Warren, but. Uh, probably not. No, I, mean, I don't think so. He's known for the Ten Commandments, the Grapes of Wrath, the original, Jacko, Buried Alive, Evil Spawn, Monster in the Closet, The Tomb, Evils of Night, Ice Pirates, The Howling, and many, many more. Over 356 is... credits. Amazing. <laughs> what the fuck is Ice Pirates? You've never seen Ice Pirates. <laughs> no. That's an 80s fucking... It sounds amazing. Yeah, it's like a comedy action film, kind of like... Uh, sort of akin to something like uh, Buckaroo Banzai. Excellent. You ever seen that? No. Oh, my God. You need to watch both of those movies now. All right. Um, On it. Also. Ice Pirates. <laughs> it also stars Howard Grant, who plays Mom's Lover. Uh, he was in A Wind from Wyoming and Blank Generation, which is also another movie that Uli, Uli did. So um, the movie was actually made with about $300,000 and made about. 4.5 million in the box office. It's fucking awesome. Holy shit. <laughs> Get this. 35 million worldwide. Like, I did not expect that. No. No, I don't know if those numbers are accurate, but I pulled that off a of wiki to kind of get it. It's, a, it's an estimated 300K, but they definitely made 35 million worldwide. It's amazing. And it, it's funny because this movie was pretty big because I remember it. I don't. Crazy, I wasn't old enough to know, I guess. 1980 to make that kind of money. Right. Like, what the fuck? Fucking A. And then what came from that was a terrible sequel. <laughs> well, why don't you tell us your thoughts about so it, Brittany? That's cool. <laughs> well, at first I was very angry with you because I was like, why are you making me watch this child torture porn? <laughs> what the fuck is going on? <laughs> like, and like instantly it was this. Cr OK, I don't know. It was just all kinds of fucking weird and wrong. And yeah, I don't know. I, I wasn't into this movie at all, necessarily. I, I would, okay, I'll take that back. It has its moments, okay. right? It has its moments where it's intriguing and interesting and then fucking comical as shit when it's not supposed to be comical, but you find humor in it. It's also pretty boring, not going to lie. It has a lot of just dead air, dead space, and you're just like, hmm. Yeah, I agree. Uh, okay. <laughs> you know? But then I saw Boogeyman from 2005 and instantly went, wow, this is way better than that. <laughs> and that's sad. <laughs> so so which one did you watch first? I watched this one first. Okay. I actually watched them in chronological order. Ah, Alex. and that's why we're talking about it in chronological order. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> well, the reason I did that is because I didn't know if it was uh, directly yeah, it, associated like a remake, reboot. I right. don't know. Right, and it seems like it would be, but it's it's not. It's, it, it's sort of kind of the same. I mean, it's the same concept of a Boogeyman, and it's so the stories are a little bit different. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. Um, it's a cool take on the whole Boogeyman story. It was it, It's interesting. And I felt like it was pretty unique with the broken mirror and that okay. and that whole concept between but like behind the mirror holding on to this evil spirit, you know, and then each individual shard that's found holds on to some type of an evil entity that has, 
mild strength or really crazy strength. Like sure. it kind of depended. I felt like it varied on the size of the shard a little bit, like the crime that came from it. Like it's insert, not a dick joke. Insert dick joke. It's here. not a dick joke. <laughs> <laughs> She's trying to lead you into it, guys. It's a yeah, trap. I actually wasn't. It's a, tra- <laughs> it's a trap. It's a trap. No, I it, surprisingly I ended up coming around to it towards the end. I didn't hate it. I thought I was going to and I didn't. So okay. I was like, mildly surprised by that at the end of it. But is it something I'd watch again? I don't know. Yeah, probably not. Probably not. It does <laughs> it's have not a something lot you really... would actively seek out. No. Yeah. Um it does have a lot of really cool moments though. Okay. In it that I was I was really happy about. Okay. So Well and we'll talk about some of those moments a little bit later. But... Oh, and the Silent Brothers kinda hot. So that was nice. Oh yeah, you I know, guess. it kind of reminds me of like a. Uh, it's like hot in a weird way. Who's the it's guy? It's like Michael Myers, but hot like a <laughs> human version. What? It's what you reminded me of, like the whole the scene in the barn, like the whole silence thing. Like it reminds me of like Who's... a Michael Myers kind of like Halloween. He kind of reminds me of like a sort of like a a Marlon Brando, like a young Marlon Brando, just a little bit. I don't know why, but he kind of does. So yeah, he's got like straight up fucking serial killer slashery vibes to me yeah so. he, he's weird as fuck and i he fought like straight out to like to me like i was like hmm, that would be what uh michael myers looks like without a mask <laughs> perfect yeah his body language is <laughs> this is uh, my fantasy <laughs> oh my god side overalls and all he's not a clown Brittany. calm down yeah you're right he's not <laughs> well do, 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 first do, do, do. off i want to say that i remember this movie when i was like really young because i really wish i could have seen this as a kid yeah my father had a, a pretty extensive beta collection i've mentioned this before uh beta for those of you who don't know what vhs maybe is or what's beta it was before before VHS, there was a battle between Sony and this uh, VHS, which VHS was actually shittier quality than Beta. Like it's a A-track long story. For movies, right? But Beta actually oh, was a I really right? good quality. <laughs> it was like it was like a film. But my dad had a bunch of these, and I remember seeing it in his collection. And I remember looking at the cover, worrying if I should watch this or not, because I was scared to watch it alone, you know. And I spent a lot of time by myself because my dad was working and my mom was working. So, um, but I couldn't remember whether or not I had seen it. So turns out, no, I have not seen it. So oh, really? this is the first time I've watched it. But for whatever reason, that cover always like it you? it's stuck in my mind. I have since so I was a kid. many movie t- like covers because I just used to like go to the horror section of Blockbuster when I was right. a kid and just look at the t- like the covers for horror movies. I have so many of them that are just stuck in my brain. Well, and a lot of people don't even really get to experience that anymore. You don't anymore yeah. at all. Like most people don't even look at fucking movie posters anymore. They just watch a trailer that po- that comes on Facebook and that's it. There's no like artistic exposure like at all well, to anything. You there's don't. You much be, exposure now yeah but you don't just get that minimalistic like here's the fucking cover and this is what's going to make you watch the movie well, and a lot of the movies back in the 80s to be honest with you or you know had cool covers but some of the, the movies garbage sucked. movies yeah, yeah. <laughs> but there's and they had cool taglines and the taglines are what brought you in and that's right. why we always do a tagline when we fucking do grave plots like it's fucking cool it's and like you make, picture in your mind we're with, keeping that alive right you guys. <laughs> we're keeping it alive we're blockbuster but I, I honestly think that this movie is pretty interesting. The concept of like the slasher supernatural movie in one, which you have to give it some credit for, because at the very least, it does something different that than most movies did because they combine the two a little bit. And there are other films that kind of do kind of like uh, Suspiria, although I wouldn't put this in the same category no. by any means. But, you know, it's it's while the movie isn't like perfect. It, it it wasn't horrible. No, it's not. Like, I didn't hate it or anything, but, you know, it keeps you kind of guessing, like, what the fuck is going on because they do so many different styles and it. it takes a bit to get going, too, by the way, guys, like at least 30 minutes. So 30 minute mark is when it starts to trickle in weird shit. In a lot of ways, it kind of reminds me and kind of starts off like I don't know why it reminds me of this, but it just kind of reminds me of like Christmas Evil or Silent Night, Deadly Night or even the movie Pieces. Like how it starts in the first like five minutes. Right. Because yeah, the no, kids it, because the absolutely. kids see something and then bad things happen, whether they do it or not, it doesn't matter. All of those movies start out that way. Right. And it's such a weirdly harsh transition 
from what happens within the first five minutes to the next 30 minutes of the movie. Yeah, it's a little jarring, too, because a lot of it is... It's, it starts out really strong and weird There is a, uncomfortable. There is a lot of nods in this movie, too. Like, they, you know, without, like, completely ripping anything off or anything. But it does give its own, yeah. you know, its own flair to it. I did notice that their, like, title song sounded a whole lot like John Carpenter's Halloween. Uh, you could tell that there was some influence from other stuff, but I wouldn't say that it sounded like anything. To me, and, uh, yeah. I, kinda, I was like, oh, Halloween. I kind of <laughs> know what you mean, but the yeah. music in the movie is really pretty interesting. Yeah. I, I liked it. It has a really dark, creepy synth score that you would see in like uh, maybe some of those fake trailers, like the faux trailers from the 80s. Yeah, it was cool. It, it's It's got that really over-the-top sound, like... And, and during the film, too, this is the weirdest thing because it comes in at some of the weirdest times to try to, like, build some sort of atmosphere and, like, continuously hold your head underwater to feel tense in some way. But it doesn't really work, I guess. I mean, it does. Some people consider this actual soundtrack to be one of the better soundtracks from the 80s yeah, in synth work. Mouse actually said the best part about this movie is is, is the music. Yeah, it sounds fucking cool as shit because they, cool. they do like this long sort of uh, sweeping, fading, creepy bass synth lines. Like, you can actually go to YouTube and listen to the entire soundtrack. Some of it's like different than that. Uh, some of it's lighter and happier, but, you know, it's a film. So but um, it's surprising to me that Tim Krog, who did the music for this, didn't continue on with anything else. Yeah. Although apparently I guess he did the music for the Boogeyman, too. But I'm pretty sure that was just the same music from the first one. Recycled. Yeah. So but uh, <laughs> a lot of the music that I in the movie that went with everything it is like oddly trying to match it with a few poorly executed jump scares. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which yeah. are really bad, but <laughs> yeah. but they're you know it's pretty typical of the slasher genre oh, yeah. in, in a lot Absolutely. of ways. So uh, lots of hiding behind curtains and like the point of view from like behind the curtain or something like that. Something looming around, you know, following a person around or something like that. It's kind of pretty tropey in that sense. Mm -hmm. um, but I I like you mentioned you I like the concept of the the mirrors too because it's got a little folklore to it that's cool that we'll go over in a little bit but um it's definitely interesting enough to make me watch it again i think i don't it's not something i'm gonna it's not gonna be in my yearly rotation but the a concept of the mirrors in general is interesting enough that i wouldn't mind watching this again and i think it's probably because of that concept i think that's besides like some of his other movies i think this is one of his bigger achievements yeah so well obviously he made like 40 billion do million dollars oh uh, yeah i mean i, I mean that's a lot of money <laughs> in the 80s yeah it's definitely that's a lot of money now and in the 80s that's even more money fuck and, it, and it's and in the movie kind of it does the typical thing where you know hey we you know crazy shit's happening to these kids as in the future it's like 20 years later and these kids are like not with their mother anymore and they get a letter from her and then all of a sudden this shit goes they start fucking getting creeped out because they remember like because essentially one of the kids like gets tied up by the mother's lover it's his son and he's like abusing Willie. him yeah, Willie gets abused by being tied up. And at first I was like, holy shit, is he fucking him? Yeah, that's like, what it, I thought. That's why I was like, why are you making me watch a child porn? The, the camera fuck? doesn't even, you don't even it's see weird. anything. Like for the first like minute. It was so uncomfortable. The first five and, and minutes like, of that Ugh. movie are extremely uncomfortable. Yeah. <laughs> And the mom's just watching, and I'm like, you just hear the kid like, <laughs> and it's, it's gross. Like, yeah, I was a little weirded out. But like, by that. After, like you come fresh off of like her putting her fucking dirty ass stocking over his face, like her nylon stocking over his face, and I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah, he looks like a murderer. Yeah, he does. He looks like a fucking like a like he just broke into her house and he's gonna fucking rape and kill her. Is what he looks like. Right. Like, okay, so obviously she's into some freaky shit. Like that's cool. But and did you notice he was silent and he as well? Stays in it. Yeah, I mean he stays in that. That's his face the entire time is in that fucking stocking. Right. And I'm like, I can't remember if he tied the kid up in the stocking or not. And I yeah, feel like he, did. he did. And yeah, I'm like, oh did. god, how traumatizing. I'd kill him too. Yeah, and and you, you know of course, bastard? fast forward to the future, all kinds of weird shit starts happening. 
happening. Of course, everyone that's close to them, who's taking care of them and taking them in as their family, sort of, and like fostering them, uh, they're they're they don't believe them for all the shit that's happening. So until, of course, that shit happens to them, mm -hmm. and then everyone's on board naturally. Yeah, like her husband <laughs> thinks she's insane. Right, like that typical trope there, but. Speaking of some of the crazy shit that, that like we were been talking about, some of the kills in this movie are actually pretty unique. Yeah, they're pretty cool. Ones I don't think I've seen in other films before, um, unless you count like Nightmare on Elm Street. Just because like if you picture an invisible man trying to kill people in weird ways. There's one fucking scene that I, I was like, that's fucking cool. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, it, it's essentially kind of like a ghost, essentially. So yeah. if you can picture someone being killed in weird ways, but there's no one actually that you can see. Yeah, that's a, pretty much like an invisible person. So which I feel like is there's so many different tales that are associated with the boogeyman. It's it's basically like your interpretation of fear. When we get to the trivia, I'll explain a little bit more because there is another name that this film was called in another country I that makes like make way more sense. More sense. Yeah. yeah. Um. Now a lot of Murder people. Mirror. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> Um, but close. Which would make more sense. <laughs> <laughs> Most people agree it's kind of like an homage to Halloween and The Exorcist, but there's there's more. If you look at the house in the movie, it Amityville. Looks, right, that's mm -hmm. exactly Again, what I, I was you, thinking. I yeah, cut you off, but Brittany's I, trying I, to steal my thunder, I'm guys. Sorry, <laughs> I got so excited because like they had the red lights in the top part of the house, and I again I smack mouse all the that's time. That's exactly what I was thinking. I like, smack him all the time. When we that's watch what movies. I wrote down here before I was so rudely. No, I'm kidding. I was all, <laughs> Amityville, that house looks like Amityville house. Brittany's like, trying to take credit for shit. I'm and Mouse kidding. is like, I know, stop smacking me. And I'm like, I'm sorry. <laughs> like, every time something cool like that I recognize happens or whatever, I smack Mouse and he's just like, can you fucking not? I feel like it was shot in New England or something because it's like... That kind of those style homes. of housing, those styles of homes and then just the general like atmosphere where they are. I feel like it's like Connecticut or like New England or like something along those lines. Well, and maybe, maybe that's what this whole thing was is like they're an homage to Amityville in a way. And maybe that's why he put the house in there and shit like that. You know, like kind he, wanted, of. he wanted to, you could tell that this movie wanted to create this really good atmosphere. Absolutely. But it wasn't exactly executed really well, but all in all, I think, you know, it's unique enough to watch again. It, is it going to be my yearly rotation? Like I said, absolutely not. Yeah. But Valiant I'm, effort. I'm really glad I watched it. It's it's nice to finally close the book on something that I saw as a child and never watched. So it had a lot of pretty ambitious ideas that it, that it sort of pulls off in a really cheap kind of way. Mm -hmm. But it's one of the reasons I like the 80s movies so much. And I always like I, rotate towards it is because even though these movies aren't the best, they're still more watchable than a lot of the crappy movies that you watch today. Yes. So it's hard for me to stomach some of the newer ones yeah. sometimes. Not so, and I'm picking on anything. Alex likes the 80s. I love the 80s. I feel like 80s. most of the movies we watch are from the 80s. Uh, if yeah. you guys go back in the episodes, at least one of the movies we watch is from the 80s. <laughs> and I'm okay with that because I I love 80s too. Well, so. and, and I'm uh, exposing Even you though I feel like I'm overly critical <laughs> about a lot of it. I'm just like, this sucks. <laughs> like, I don't know what it is. I just, I don't know why I can watch the shittiest 80s movie and be okay with it where I can't watch the shittiest. It's a different. It's a generational 2000 thing. thing and and be like okay with it like it's a generational thing that's all it is it's like i feel like i don't know like maybe maybe it's because it's they nostalgia. used they used film back then and so like they weren't you know what i mean like when they used mm -hmm. film back then you were burning a lot of money yep so it's like fuck like if you fuck something up you had to just stick with it like you, a lot mm -hmm. of times a lot of the can't reshoot they it. couldn't reshoot it because they couldn't afford it because mm -hmm. it's expensive as fuck yeah. nowadays it's like do as many takes as you want and you're, and you're still not satisfied and you're satisfied with that take mm -hmm. come on now you could do a million yeah everything back then is almost just like rough takes Right, you know, and or first takes, they they made do with what they could and what they had, and that was it. Yeah. So it's I appreciate it more from an artistic standpoint. Yeah. You know, with I absolutely do. So yeah, and you are exposing me to a lot of stuff because it's a generational thing. Like, right. You know, we you're well, old. <laughs> He's not fucking old. <laughs> uh, you are. No, I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm kidding. <laughs> super old. There is a, actually a whole lot of trivia on it that I kind of dug to get. Um, there wasn't like, you know, this isn't stuff that you're just going to find in IMDb or anything like that. But um, the little Willie in the movie, <laughs> I mean, well, 
the little boy Presumably character. Presumably Big Will. Oh, yeah. the child? God damn yeah. it. Pretend I didn't say that. You're not weird. Well, the little boy character who played the younger Willie, played by uh, Jay Wright, the kid. He, he's actually done a lot of like voice acting on the GTA games. The Grand Theft Auto games? Really? Yeah, all the way up until like part four. So he's a voice for when they kill a hooker? No, no, no. Actually, he's just the commercial voice that when you listen to the radio, when they're oh, talking. Oh, fuck, really? Yeah, and he does a lot of the commercials in between. Oh, my God, that's hilarious. Yeah, I thought that was really weird. Because I always thought that guy was smooth. Like, Well, I there's a it. couple. So. That's fucking cool. We mentioned before also that there was a direct sequel to this movie that we were considering doing. <laughs> But a lot of people hate it simply for the fact that it has about, oh, two thirds of the original in it with flashbacks. Oh, hell no. Yeah. So which I believe in the director's cut, you can get on DVD. It's exactly like that. They literally just cut in parts of the old movie. Yeah. Our our friend that posted on your post and said, you guys dodged a bullet with that one. (laughs) You're, You're correct. I'm so glad we... I'm so glad Alex did not subject me to that kind of torture. Right. Well, I didn't know. I had no idea. Never, I, I'm just, I like to well, do Well, you look them. at it and go, this made like $40 million. Like, clearly the second one's probably going to be something somewhat decent, right? Well, and, I, and the tendency is to try to do it sequentially. So yeah, because can... Alex is crazy. <laughs> but <laughs> I'm glad we didn't. But apparently, so he acted in the second film, by the way, Uli. Mm-hmm. Um, or Uli. I'm pretty sure it's Uli. Most likely Uli. I'm a hundred pretty sure it's Uli, but he was a he was approached to do the sequel, but he wasn't really interested in doing one. He so he acted in the film as himself, not wanting to make the sequel in the sequel. <laughs> 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 and <Okay. laughs> he even said that he really isn't uh, proud of the movies he, he's made, apparently. He's more proud of the accomplishments he's done with human beings than he is with the artwork he's made. Like, he feels like if he's helped somebody and changed like, their like, life. Relationships that he's built up. Yes, of it? like okay. things that he's done to help people instead of like make movies. So, humanitarian. It, it, I guess so. But he also went on to say that when he made the boogeyman two or just boogeyman two boogeyman two they said well you can we want you to make it he didn't want to do it they said he said well i'll tell you what i'll do it if you let me do whatever the fuck i want so he made the sequel and nobody likes and did whatever the fuck he wanted I, I, and, and i almost liked it yeah i kind of <laughs> wonder if he was like you know because he added all this extra footage to make a feature film yeah maybe he either he didn't have enough money to make a feature film and just added all the extra stuff i don't know i'm confused on that but it's interesting by the way, guys, this movie in particular is actually one of the infamous video nasty uh, movies that were the of the non prosecuted type. So they didn't go after them for any kind of like bullshit or whatever. But it's surprising. It's still considered a video nasty in the UK. So which is really weird because. Yeah, it's really not even that bad, but I guess the beginning scene is a little that would make it the the child thing. I'm assuming is probably why. Um, so interesting. That's I would why I would think it would be right. That's it's why a... I'm surprised that it wasn't that no one went after it legally. People were weird back then and yeah. they're getting weird again. <laughs> <laughs> They've always been weird. Remember when I told you about the, the name, the different name in another country? Mm-hmm. There was the movie was released as El Espejo Asesino in Mexico, which means the killer mirror. Perfect. So See, that's better. I think it makes a lot more sense if you ask me. Like that is way better than what the movie. It makes way more sense. It's because... not as sellable, maybe. No, maybe it's not marketable. I guess not. But yeah, because the only I didn't feel like this was very. Um... The Boogeyman is a really good title, especially because they probably no one had used it, so they were like, "Oh, this is perfect." Right. It's not necessarily as accurate to the whole ideal of the boogeyman as the second movie we watched is. Right. Yeah. It's completely. Uh, that's why I feel like the killer mirror is probably a better representation of this movie than, than anything. So but murder mirror. Like, for example, they have a lot of folklore in this movie in a way. Well, it doesn't like go over, you know, what the folklore is, but they kind of bring up like, you know, the bad luck you get when you break a mirror. Mm-hmm. Uh, it also tells that mirrors record whatever has been seen in it. And when you break it, it releases it- all that energy and whatever spirit or whatever that it collected. Right. In this case, it was 
this kid murdering this guy who tried him up and he gets free because his sister cuts him free and then he takes the knife and stabs the dude which is pretty funny like a hundred times right <laughs> obviously the mirror that was over the bed of the mother's lover so i don't remember seeing it in there but i'm assuming that's because he stabs him in that bedroom right yeah in it's, the back it's the one that it's the same mirror that she breaks later on right yeah it's in the same spot i think too Uli uh, Lomel, by the way, did a shock mockumentary called America Land of Freaks with two E's. And uh, it just came out in Germany in February, uh, which has is sort of like a, a middle finger to Trump. Apparently, I watched the trailer. It's it's pretty weird. It's like kind of like a documentary, but it's also like a really over the top version of what America would be. Uh, it, it's kind of like um well, he first of all, let me mention, he was really good friends with Andy Warhol, by the way. Makes sense. And there's a story on that, and I'll tell you that in a second. So in some respects, it's very out there, like Andy Warhol's stuff would be. They're kind of cut from the same cloth, I think, a little bit, because apparently he did a movie called The Tenderness of the Wolves, which I mentioned earlier in 1977. So someone at the New York Times in 1977 wrote that The Tenderness of the Wolves reminded them of Andy Warhol's work only better so Andy actually attended the next screening after the movie and uh, he met with Uli and he asked me what my plans were he says he's like I invented a love story at dinner with Warhol Truman Capote and Jackie Kennedy called Blank Generation which is another movie so I'd be curious to see that just knowing the history on it right that they sat down and kind of came up with a concept for a movie and then it got made and it's called Blank Generation so, which is another movie that he did. So it, it's, just, it's his background is really interesting. You know? <laughs> so, but yeah, that that uh, shock mockumentary America Land of the Freaks should be coming out soon. I don't know. Kind of reminds me of some of the ramblings of like Hunter S. Thompson a little bit. <laughs> He's like in this like cowboy hat and like a Mickey Mouse vest and like really weird shit. All right. He looks like, I don't know. It's really weird. It's interesting, though. This movie in particular obviously spun off many other uh, sequels. There was the direct sequel, which is Boogeyman. And then there was Return of the Boogeyman, which was in 1994. They also made other movies that are with the same title, only called Boogeyman, which came out in 2005, which we'll be talking about next. And they made three sequels to that. But there is a more direct sequel coming out called Boogeyman Reincarnation coming out. And here's the synopsis. Oh, Lord. A terrible crime echoes through the ages as the souls of the condemned pay an eternal price for their vicious acts upon the innocent with classic sensibilities and contemporary feel boogeyman reincarnation is spawning a new era so it's essentially like a remake right or reboot i guess you would call it it has the guy um lawrence harvey from centipede human centipede 2 really the weird creepy greasy dude <laughs> wow and right. uh obviously uli's in it as so well german uh, no, it was it seemed in English. And like I watched the trailer. There's a teaser for it, by the way, guys. And I'll include it that in the notes of this show, this episode. So definitely check it out because they compare it like it's Uli talking. I can tell by his voice like it, it's him. And he's like t comparing it to Evil Dead one and two. And Sam Raimi and Rob Tappert came out with Evil Dead 1 and 2, and it shocked the world. And just as that shocked the world, the Boogeyman came out and shocked the world with its blah, 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 blah. So it, it looks kind of like an artistic film. Like a really weird... Like an art house. Kind of like, like art yeah. housey film, but it's a little more schlocky. Hmm. I don't know. It looks interesting. I'd actually be interested to see it. That's mm -hmm. supposed to be coming out soon. They had a teaser for that back in 2016, but then he passed away in 2017. So it looked like most of it was done, but they're obviously Holding on to it. Yeah. I don't know what's going on. Maybe he got tied up because he passed away. Yeah. I had to work so. out some like legal rights or something. Did you have any standout scenes that you want to talk about? I'm going to call them standout scenes now because favorite scenes sometimes is a little weird. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, my favorite scene was when the child gets tied up and beaten the fuck out of. Yeah. yeah. Like, uh, what? I mean, yeah, the the whole first five minutes of that movie is a standout scene, right? Because it's it, that's what gets you. 
You know, that's yeah. what brings you in. You're just like, what the fucking shit am I watching? Well, the kids staring in the window was all weird. That too. was weird. The the whole like interaction between the mom and her boyfriend or whatever is weird and uncomfortable. And then them staring in the window is weird and uncomfortable. You have no idea that like, those are her kids. Like right. you think that those are just like two weird children from well, they, this block or something. And they clearly weren't watching them have sex. They were just. They want to come inside because it's cold. Whoa. And they're stuck outside. <laughs> That's yeah, I'm why did like, they lock him out of the house? Yeah, like they, they talk about that later. Like my mom told us to play outside, and I just I was cold in the middle of the night. Yeah, the middle of the night, go play on the porch where it's freezing. You like, fucking bastard! So that's what they're doing. They're like little puppy dogs, like staring at the standing at the door, like staring to hope that you'll let them in because they're fucking freezing to death. So the beginning was one of the big scenes. You think? That I was, feel like it was. Yeah. Like I mean, and it's it's pivotal to the story. Well, and then so, I, I you you I remember you saying she was standing in the doorway. The mom was standing in the doorway while the lover was tying up the the brother yeah and like the little girl which is lacy is standing there like like wanting to help him and she's like get out of here and go to bed yeah you've been bad or something like that and it's like whoa bitch yeah it's fucking weird and then <laughs> like every the whole like sequence that occurs after that reminds me a lot of halloween like that whole first person point of view oh yeah well yeah it's a slasher thing it yeah. is it's it's definitely a slasher thing like it's halloween or giallo what, I, or what I always think of giallo. like instantly but yeah well obviously you go back further from the giallo films and well they don't show any hands in it oh, that would be a typical well they did giallo film but they did later with the when the son was going in to stab him they show his hand holding the knife oh that the very yeah i guess you're right and they, show the about that. they show the daughter's hand holding the knife too but for the rest of the movie they don't no when they do that hiding no the rest shit. of the movie it's just some stupid fucking like heavy breathing mouth breather <laughs> and then people die <laughs> and i'm like okay <laughs> he's literally like <sighs> 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 like that's it like i'm like what the fuck so one of the scenes that i thought was really funny is Lacey breaks the mirror in the house that she grew up in and where other people now live and they sort of are i don't know what they're doing they're just kind of like rekindling her memories so that she can deal with the crazy shit because she blames herself for it's her all brother her fucking husband's idea right like her husband's like you need to go here they talk to a therapist and the therapist is like or the psychiatrist or doctor who is played by john carradine says go to the house and like figure it out or something like that yeah. so they go and she's like staring into this mirror and she sees like the lover of her mother uh it laying on the bed in the same outfit that he was wearing with the stocking over his face <laughs> yeah. and he's just laying there and she looks on the bed and he's not there and then she looks in the mirror and he's there and he starts to getting up and it's back and forth back and forth and then she screams and then like smashes the mirror and then the way she smashes the mirror and screams and everything and all these people are like He's like, what the hell are you doing, Lacey? <laughs> and the way she broke it and like how she was acting there was really funny to me. It was funny. I was laughing. And then I loved the 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 older sister. The two sisters? The, the, well, yeah. the oldest sister or whatever that let them in the house that like comes in and she's just like, ah, fuck it. We all it. cool about it. Like she doesn't yeah. care that it's fucking. I was like, get the, I'll be like, get the fuck out of my house, you psycho. Like, you got a paper bag so I can pick this up. What the fuck? I'll, like, I'll pay for it, of course. She's just like, ah, don't even worry about it. Yeah, she handles it so like strangely. She's like, she doesn't care. She's like, is she okay? And then I'm he like, takes the frame, which is probably the most valuable part of the whole fucking thing. <laughs> like, leave the frame full. Leaves, like, takes the frame and then lays. He's freaking out, yelling at him like, hey, what are we doing? Why are you taking the mirror? And he's like, we're going to take it home. And the, he puts all the shards of glass and the mirror in the fucking bag and then takes that with him, Except too. for one which, shard. But that doesn't make any sense. Like, what the fuck is going on? Yeah, one shard is left in there. And that's for the... You want to talk about that scene? Oh, yeah. Because something happens because that shard's yeah, there. Okay. okay, so the shard, the one shard that they didn't get that's left in, in the house that Lacey grew up in right? right and so it's the middle sister now and the son or the son the there's there's younger two brother. sisters that look like kind of like twins one's older and one's younger yeah, and then there's a younger and a brother. brother yeah and so the middle sister was she taking a shower or something like that i don't know what the yeah. fuck she's doing she's like she's getting ready to take a shower and she cuts her hair or something i don't know what she was doing the mirror takes over like the shard or whatever like takes overpowers her right and then it cuts a big chunk off of her hair and, and with the scissors out, yeah. and she starts to freak out and then all of a sudden it the scissors start cutting off her, of course cutting off her clothes or whatever and then it just very like 
and it skips to an, somewhere else and then comes back to the scene. I can't remember what she's keeps skipping to. Well, what happens with the scissors? But it keeps coming back and forth. But anyway, so the next thing, next scene is the scissors are very slowly approaching her neck, and then all of a sudden she stabs herself in the neck with the scissors, and you just right. hear her like. <sighs> she falls into the tub, and she falls so dramatically into this tub, and I was like, "Ow!" <laughs> and I like, watched it went, "Ow!" That has to hurt. And then the cherry on top of all of this bullshit, right? Is all of a sudden the window above the tub opens, just like. Whoosh, and then the fucking little brother peeks trying to his scare. head in. Yeah, he's all, what did he say, boogeyman or something like that? I don't know. He boogie, did. boogie, 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 or yeah, something Yeah, he yelled like, like boogeyman or something. I think that's exactly what he yelled. It's like, boogeyman. I don't man. remember, yeah. Something stupid. I just remember Mouse and I laughed about it forever. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he shouts boogeyman and he sounds stupid as fuck. And then all of a sudden the fucking window latch un- like unhinges and it falls down on his neck and crushes his neck in the window. It doesn't look good, though, guys. It no, looks, it's terrible. It looks like it just went down so slow that he doesn't even get affected. I was like, yeah. is he just asleep? That's like, what I thought. Like, and it just, sli- yeah, just like slides down, and he's just like, Ugh. and then his arms and his little head stuck in the window, and he's, that's it. Yeah. And then who knows what happens to the other sister? Because that's all we get from that scene. Well, no, because they, they, the piece of the broken mirror glows, and because apparently any mirror that the supernatural lover uh, appears in is enough to infect everyone with the other parts of the mirror. So the other sister, of course, she finds the glowing piece of the mirror on the ground and is possessed and starts grabbing onto the the piece and her hand starts bleeding and she starts washing it off Mm -hmm. like in disbelief and scared. And she doesn't know why she's washing it off. It makes no sense. And then while she's bleeding on it, she drops it in the sink and then the, the, oh, yeah. the sink catches fire. Blows up, yeah. Right. And then she's like, and then and then the door hits her and it's like, it makes this really cartoonish door splat. It's like, <laughs> yeah, you're right. I forgot. I totally forgot about that part. But it was like really delayed too. So like she gets hit by the door and it's like, <laughs> Like, I don't know, like, how she died. Like, yeah, it, who knows? I didn't know how the kid died, although I assumed that he was dead He's because they show blood crushed. out of his mouth. Yeah, like, yeah, who knows? Like, it was so weird. It was so fucking weird. There was the, the knitting needle where the guy gets stabbed in the back of the head by the invisible ghost. And then the girl comes and sees him sitting upright in the car. That was my favorite one. And the girl goes in and then it, the ghost pushes her <laughs> face onto his face, which has a, the sewing, uh, the, not a sewing needle, but a knitting. It was an. I thought it was like a knife. It was the knife. No, it, no, no, no. It was a knitting. It was a knitting needle. Are you sure? I could yes, have sworn she put that sure. knife in the box. And mm-hmm. I thought it was it was that knife. If it was, I didn't see it because it looked thin. I'm pretty positive because it was just the tip that comes out of his mouth. I thought it was a knitting needle. And I didn't even know where that came from. It was the But kni- yeah, I saw that part too. Yeah, but I didn't see. The box. It didn't look like the shape of a knife. No, it, you're right. It looked like it just thin. It does. Yeah, you're, you're totally right. It doesn't. But I'm pretty positive because... Because they put, they make it, they make such a point out of them grab it, grabbing that knife and putting it in that box. And he takes the box and puts it in the back of the car. I'd have to watch it again to make sure. And then he's sitting there but... for whatever the, he has, he's like drawn to come back into the car and he sits in the car and then all of a sudden the knife just is floating behind him and then it just goes <laughs> into the back of his neck. I love, I love also when he's walking to the car before that happens that he like walks into the tree. Yeah. Like the branches or whatever. <laughs> <Like it's> stupid. <laughs> It's so stupid. Like I loved that entire interaction with the the teens. Like it was so stupid. Like it was we're talking bad. about little hot dogs. You're almost done. And, well, that's one fucking hot dog <laughs> on that shitty ass grill. And well, are you serious? That's all and they could afford. It, and then of course it's the piece of shit dude that's like, why don't you go get me the whatever? Like you go make me dinner or whatever is basically a conversation that he has <laughs> with this chick. And then you cut. And then later you come back and see that he's eating the one singular hot dog like on the ground. Like right. I'm like, what a dick. You but, know. But after the guy, the 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 knife or the needle whatever it is gets stabs through the back of his head comes out the front of his mouth then his girlfriend's like why is he just sitting in the car and goes over there and she gets her face and body when she opens the car door she looks in and she gets scared i love it and then her face gets pushed and mouth gets pushed into the knife or needle or whatever yeah and then it's just like she dies too and it's like it's it's hilarious (laughs) but like i've never seen a kill like that it was fucking cool like it was just like this two for one special that you get and she comes in, she's just peering in, trying to talk to him, right? And then right. his, like, fucking neck eerily, like, turns towards her. And it's just this, you know, sh- this sharp-ass blade 
coming out of his mouth. Right. And she's like, what the hell? And then the door, the ghostly mouth breather, slams the door on her ass. And that's when her- Is that what it is? Yeah, he closes the door on her. And so she gets launched into his fucking face. That's what it was. And she's screaming. So then the fucking same blade goes into her mouth. And so it looks like they're making out. So the blade pierces her and she dies from that too, supposedly. She dies from that. It it doesn't like execute- And then they just leave her there. (laughs) They leave him there. Yeah, they're like, well, we got a car. Screw them. They drove themselves. Because they think they're making out. Yeah, they think they're about to fuck or whatever. Because they just disappeared for 10 minutes prior to that to go try and fuck in the abandoned house. So, (laughs) And I love that. The whole time I'm sitting there going, because this little boy, like the main chick, Lacey, it's her son, has a a shard of the mirror on his shoe. Oh, the very end. No, no, no. This is the beginning. This is in that part. This is what causes that. She takes her son fishing, and he has a sh- that shard under on stuck on the bottom of his shoe, and it's the um, reflection is reaching across the lake. Oh yeah, I saw and that. That's, that's right, what yeah. that's what causes which, the which kids was a really cool shot, death. by the way. Yeah, but I'm like that would not reach that fucking far. Are you kidding? It's me? interesting. They they make it flare I just up. Look at it, and I'm just like, and it's totally the wrong like angles and everything for like inside of the shack for the mirror flashing. It was cool, and I really liked it right. artistically. It was cool as fuck, but I'm like that is not practical. <laughs> like the whole time I'm like that would never happen like me just being a dick but anyway that was my that's my like favorite fucking I love that fucking my scene. favorite like, of so all is probably the most iconic thing about this film the in priest. my opinion is where Lacey's cooking after like like her husband and everybody the shits hit the fan at this point in time and they go looking for somebody and some they the people are dead and then after everyone finds out oh, that yeah. people have died she's like cooking in the kitchen and like he's like hey we gotta go and she's like oh that's fine i'm cooking here and he's like no we what's her name's dead and she's like oh that's fine i will just one less plate for everyone you know or something like that and she's like what the fuck and then he grabs her shoulder she turns around and she's got one of the pieces of the mirror like a monocle just like covering her eye it's not like jammed in it or anything and it's just yeah it's just like sitting there and she turns around to their husband who doesn't understand why the fuck this is happening or did I or probably any viewer at this point. But she turns and she has that mirror in her eye. It starts shining and she starts screaming weird shit. It's like chanting. She's yeah. like, get away, get away or something like yeah, that. Yeah, and like a man voice. And then as her husband uh, starts bleeding from the eyes, like, and we're not just talking like a little bit and then it comes out. It's like all of a sudden he's got like eye sockets full of blood Mm -hmm. that are just pouring down his face. And then he falls on the ground, but his eyes are still there. So it's a little weird. weird. And then the priest comes in and he's holding up a cross to her and he starts bleeding on the top of the head. Yeah. For what fucking reason? (laughs) I don't even know. They don't even show that it's just blood starts pouring out the top of his head. It looks cool as fuck. Fuck. Like it the looks whole scene. fucking cool. That scene yeah. is fucking brilliant. And That's my favorite. It looks beautiful. And then all of a sudden they pull out from that shot and <laughs> he's got all these knives stabbed into the back of him and you can tell all kinds that he's of shit. wearing like a pad or something. Right. On the back of him. Like you can really see it. And I felt like they noticed that, so that's why they cut that part real fast. And yeah, there's this, like, and it's it's like knives, forks, spoons, yeah. like everything, or just stabbed him in the back, I guess. But, but you don't hear it or no, know why. you don't hear it. You don't understand. Like you don't like see it. Like you don't even like think that that happened. And then you'd think, obviously, like maybe like she brought an axe down on his head or something. And uh, it doesn't make any no, sense. No, nothing comes into contact with his fucking head. He's just bleeding profusely from the top of his head. But you know what? It made a cool shot, so I don't even care. I, I almost feel like they were just like, oh, let's just pour it on just his head. Yeah. And he's just like, like they were up above him, like in the lighting area. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It looked cool. I don't care. It, it, it paid off. That was my favorite part because the like, it looks really like trippy. And yeah, like everything that's happening in that whole scene it's is a really great still. That's like where everything goes batshit right there. Yeah. But that's pretty much it for that movie. If I had to say, like a score for that one. What would you give it? Five and a half. Yeah, it's it's above average. Mm-hmm. It's bu- above average in the unique but not by weird a lot. shit, but it's very, I don't want to say, most people would say it's forgettable. Like most Absolutely. people. Yeah. But if you're kind of like into 80s horror movies, it's definitely above average. Yeah, it's cool. I, I liked it. I didn't think I was going to. And then when I watched the, the other 
when I watched the other movie, I was like, wow, I like the 80s one yeah. way better, which was shocking to me. But Do you want to tell us about Boogeyman? Yeah. So Brittany did another movie, obviously, that we watched. Um, so the second film we took part in was called Boogeyman from 2005. The very quick and brief story behind this is a young man tries to deal with the childhood terror that has never stopped haunting him. This was directed by Stephen Kay, who has mostly has all TV credits, uh, a lot of TV, you know, TV movies and things like that. He did the Lizzie Borden Chronicles, which was a two part series, which was excellent, by the way. I mean, it had it. Christina Ricci in it and it was fantastic. Really? OK. Yeah, it was actually really good. Um, He did, a, I think, a whole season of episodes for Sons of Anarchy. He did the Craigslist Killer TV movie, uh, Blue Eyed Butcher TV movie and The Hunt for the BTK killer mm. which is interesting interesting enough because your director did btk yeah movie. similar um it was written by three different people eric kripke who did the story and screenplay who also did boogeyman 2 and boogeyman 3 of the the ones after These, this yeah. yeah not in the 80s obviously this is like from like 2006 and probably 2007 i'm gonna guess but, okay um he also did haunted and he did this show supernatural Juliet Snowden also took part in the screenplay, who is known for the Ouija movies. The Which sp- ones? All of them. Well, wait, the when you recent. say, oh, the Ouija? most recent yeah. ones, yeah. Yeah, so there's two, there's three, I think. There's now. two, well, there's a lot of Ouija movies, but the most ones you're talking recent. about from Bloom House. Right. Yeah. Um, She also did the, or did the screenplay for The Possession and the movie Knowing. Okay. The Knowing. I, oh, yeah. Just with knowing, yeah. Nicolas Cage. And it also has Styles White. Who also took part in the screenplay, who did the screenplays for the same exact movies as Juliet Snowden. Okay. I don't know if they're just friends. It's like or a team or something. Maybe they love each other. <laughs> who knows? Um, this movie stars Barry Watson, who plays Tim, the main character. Y'all probably know him like I do from Seventh Heaven. Yeah. <laughs> Which I, it's a guilty pleasure. I love the fuck out of that show. This is actually like one of the only horror movies he ever took part in. He did two others that could technically be considered as horror or just like drama. Okay. Whatever films in there called Teaching Mrs. Tingle and When Strangers Appear. When Strangers Appear actually sounds pretty decent, so I kind of want to check it it's out. It's probably like a thriller. Yeah, they're, they're like psychological thriller type, mm-hmm. maybe horror-esque movies or wannabe horror movies but you know he's just most well, well known for seventh heaven and everything he's done kind of since then is not really well noted okay so, yeah i noticed that when mostly I was looking a bunch of tv i was shit. like i know him and from i was somewhere. surprised yeah because i was like oh my gosh whatever the fuck his name is from seventh heaven and i was all excited because <laughs> i love that show and he's like the older kid right he's the older older son yeah. yeah or older brother or whatever the hot one I mean, not the bad one, the hot one. It also has uh, Emily Deschanel, who plays Kate, who is most widely known for Bones, which is a great oh. TV show. Um, she's also She hasn't done a lot of horror stuff either, um, but she was also in Cold Mountain, which is a really good movie. Um, and then she was in the Sleepy Hollow TV series, which lasted all five minutes. <laughs> um, this also has, which I feel like they relied very heavily on the fact that she was in this movie even though she's in it for all of maybe collectively two minutes at most it also has motherfucking lucy lawless who plays tim's mom who everyone knows as xena the warrior princess i didn't even recognize her well they don't show her like regular they do like briefly though in like flashbacks Briefly, they show her in flashbacks where she looks sort of like herself, but she's very momly. Like, they make her very natural and mom esque. Like, everybody right. fucking knows who Xena is. I know her best from the Spartacus series, which mm-hmm. she is. And that's when we get to see her naked for the first time, which is amazing. <laughs> she has great tits. <laughs> anyway, she was also in a film called The Dark Room and Salem the TV mm-hmm. series which is also really good and underrated I feel like um and most recently you guys will know her from Ash versus the Evil Dead right yeah which so stoked when they brought her in on that shit yeah. cuz I fucking love her they had a lot of different people on that show like just if if you you know if you weren't sold on her from Xena yeah watch fucking Spartacus you guys like you're going to love her and hate her in that and it's beautiful <laughs> And then come now to Ash vs. the Evil Dead, and she's just amazing. Um, it also has Tori Musset, who plays Jessica, who was in uh, the film The Condemned, The Matrix Reloaded, and she was in um, the Nightmares and Dreamscapes Stephen King TV miniseries. She was the chick that was in the 
in Matrix Reloaded, I would assume that she's one of the chicks in the werewolves uh, club. I believe so. Where they had like the ghost, the the twin ghost guys. I believe. I think you're right. I think it is. Uh, last but not least, it has Sky McCole Bartusiak. Look at me. <laughs> uh, who plays Franny? Um, who was in Don't Say a Word? Another film called Kill Your Darlings, and most recently a film called Sick Boy. Okay. Which looks ridiculous. It kind of looks like a ripoff of like The Grudge or like The Ring kind of. Oh, okay. <laughs> weird. Anyway, surprisingly, this fantastic movie had a budget of 20 million fucking dollars. It couldn't have made much. Uh, mm, You shall be surprised, sir. Well, really? I'm okay. Going, I'm going to get into that. Alex, I'm dying to know. What you thought about this movie? Uh, <laughs> well, there. <laughs> oh wait, can I ask you a question first? Oh yeah, sure, go ahead. It? Okay, which will lead kind of into your answer, maybe. I don't okay. Know. Um, I asked Mouse this. I was like, when you grew up, were you ever told stories of like the boogeyman, or did your parents tell you this kind of crazy folklore to try and keep you in your bed or make you go to bed on time or stay in bed, whatever, you know, like the whole concept of the boogeyman, right? Like, I know what you mean. Or yeah. your sister or your brother or whatever growing up, you know, what I mean? don't or remember that because I was very, uh, you know, like I had night terrors and shit mm -hmm. like that when I was a kid. So Is I don't... this something that like haunted you as a child? Yeah. I think I just had an overactive imagination for the, for, you know, when I was a kid growing up, but you know, and this movie does kind of play on that a little bit, even though it's like, eh. yeah. but yeah, I don't remember anyone in particular ever threatening me to go to bed by wish of death from <laughs> some entity. No, right. What was, what, what was your like childhood fear? Like what was something that you saw or were well, told that stuck with you? Forever? And this is kind of going to answer it in a little bit in about some of the segments. One of my favorite parts in the movie is the very beginning. And part of the reason why is because they play on the tropes of what you are like as a kid mm -hmm. sitting in the bed, looking at the shadows of things and in the dark and making out what your mind makes you think of when you're a you kid. still do as an adult. Right. And like all the <laughs> things that happen in the beginning of the movie is it, it, it hit a note with me in that respect. So I think it, it did a good job. Yeah. Um, first off, I mean, this is clearly not a sequel to Uli Lomel's no. Mirror Party Massacre film. <laughs> Mirror Party Massacre, <laughs> perfect! <laughs> it's, uh, it's pretty much just dealing with the name we heard a million times as a kid, like you said. Although one, one thing these movies have in common is that they both have kids dealing with bad shit happening as a kid, and their therapists or doctors encourage them to go fucking deal with it by trudging all that bad shit back up again, which of of course, turns out to be bad news bears for Billy Boy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, or like, Tim. Why we got to drudge all this shit up? Like every, <laughs> yeah. every time in a horror movie that that happens, it's always the worst fucking thing. That's a horror movie trope right there. And Oh, absolutely. By the way, <laughs> this movie, uh, mm -hmm. it's I don't want to say it's bad. It's just average. I'll say you know, it's bad. It's typical. There's a lot of tropes, like I was saying. You know, there's silly writing or acting. It's hard to kind of discern between the two. I don't know which is worse. Um, it could be the combo thing there, but there's so many overwhelming horror tropes up until about the middle or, or uh, the middle of the third act. And so, so like the last 15 minutes of the movie where it actually starts to get a little wild and interesting and shit flies off the handle to get interesting for the viewer. But when we finally get to see the boogeyman, oh my God. the only scary thing about him was the abortion of CGI that squirted all over the screen yep. like semen and shit. He is like a very weird ver like Well, you don't even... want to explain him what he looks like oh, yet. Oh, okay. Don't t say what it is Never mind. because we don't want to spoil it for those who want to ruin their lives by watching this. But we're the, doing you a favor. They sort of <laughs> redeem why he looks the way that he does without spoiling it for you and why it is what it is. But it, I think it's kind of a cop out. It goes a weird direction that I wasn't necessarily expecting. Yeah. And I was very confused. 
But then again, it looks like a cop out to me. I mean, so there is some like, cool. You didn't know where you were going, so you d- threw this in there. There really is some cool things that are in it that remind that they kind of borrow from other more interesting movies in a way. Uh, there are some like if I wanted to be critical about it and say that it's 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 actually pretty well shot and like the yeah. cinematography is actually pretty good. It's unique. It's not just static shots. They like try to be a little creative with it. So you got to give them that. Uh, it, it's like not just textbook filmmaking it's but it is in a way yeah like i there were some shots that they did that i thought were really cool and i was like oh this this is kind of cool like i like how they did this and this but overall the movie is just just by the book fucking bull maybe like the most average film that you could think and something britney didn't mention is it's actually produced by sam raimi and rob tappert I think Sam Raimi would thank me for not mentioning the fact that he produced I it. Yeah, it's really weird that they actually produce this because at the end of the movie, it said it. And I was like, what? Yeah. Like, wait, what? I did what? the same fucking thing. I was so taken aback by it. And I was like, what the fuck? Why? Uh, I mean, it's. I mean, he's done some questionable. I, I don't want to say it's like bad though. It's just average. It's it just is, so average. I, I didn't give a fucking fuck about this movie like at all. It's I like just... average in the sense that like the Bye Bye Man is average. Ugh. You know what I mean? Like, there's nothing real extraordinarily special. It has some, uh, like, the Bye Bye Man in the beginning has some pretty interesting stuff that happens. But then when it reveals itself, you're like, ugh. But at the very end, before it reveals that this movie, it's actually kind of interesting because they do some weird, like, stuff with closets, we'll just say, that <laughs> I thought was pretty interesting. Closets. I mean, essentially, this is a coming out of the closet movie. Or dragging, getting being dragged back into it, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, you shouldn't have left. Yeah. Like, you, <laughs> it's you, like you, a you, horror story. You're for, not ready. Yeah, it's a you're horror story. It's like a nightmare for people who have come out of the closet <laughs> and are going back into it somehow. You're only half-baked. Get the fuck back in here. <laughs> <laughs> World's not ready for you yet. What about you, though? What'd you think? Yeah, I hate there's not much more to say about it other than I didn't like it at all. Really? So I'm, okay. I'm going to say that. Like I, I literally, the I liked one part about the movie, and the rest of it, I just could no. Yeah. I didn't. The payoff at the end was not at all fucking worth it to me, and I just was irritated the entire time. And I was surprised because I thought I would maybe like it, but then at the same time, I remember actually, you know what? There's two parts of of it that I liked. I'll take that back. Okay. Um. I just, I don't know. But it says a lot when this came out in 2005, and I had never heard of it. I had. I just, it was one of those movies that I was just like, yeah, this is probably not going to be good. Yeah, it's like on the level now where I look at the Bye Bye Man and go, what a fucking stupid name for a movie. I kind of feel like the Bye Bye Man probably would have been better than this by a little bit. Just by a little bit. I feel like it's better. I haven't even seen the unrated yet, but I saw the the Bye Bye Man in the theater. Yeah, it just kind of reminds me of that typical trope kind of thing, which in some respects I miss in some movies. But in the same respect, if you've seen so many movies do the same fucking thing and borrow the same fucking tropes from every fucking thing. Yeah, I mean, I love like the whole concept of playing off of like childhood fear sure. things, or you know, like because every every kid has their own version of what scares them. And that's like the cool concept behind the boogeyman in general is it's your version of fear, your interpretation of fear. It's like what scares you, like from stories maybe that your grandparents told you or stories right. that your parents told you. It's like this age old folklore that puts on all these masks over time and it's always changing. It's always something different, you know, but I didn't have sadistic asshole, asshole parents, so they didn't do that shit to me growing up. Right. Um, but I will tell you what fucked with me for my entire fucking childhood. What? Me trying to sleep by myself in a house by myself and nobody else is around, like, I have to have lights on. And that seems so crazy to me, but I'm so, like, I watch so much shit with murders and I'm so obsessed with serial killers and, like, all kinds of stuff. And I'm like, I'm going to get killed. Closets (laughs) and uh, and, um, basements scared me the most when I was a kid. I didn't have a basement, but I had an attic. And my fucking bedroom like when my brother finally moved out and i got to move to the cool room upstairs right we had the crawl space this weird fucking door that you could just pull off right yeah and then there was one right there by where my computer desk and shit was that you could see 
if you like peered your head around the staircase right or you could see it from like my like i had a loft bed or whatever so i could see the other fucking door that see, would go into my attic it's right? interesting you're scared of those doors but in the movie the guy like has all of his doors removed yeah in his home he's scared of what's hiding behind like him. that's he, why he removes them yeah he removed all the doors which is weird so in his loft see. or whatever yeah. yeah he has he has his mattresses straight on the floor he right. has no closets, and he removes all the doors from all of his cabinets. Right. And I mean, wow. I mean, my it's, house growing up was haunted as fuck, so that's why I'm scared of that to shit. To give you guys <laughs> an idea, just so we make context out of this for you listening, part of the reason why this guy does this is because his father was taken by the boogeyman in the Through beginning closet, of the movie. Yeah. So we're not really ruining anything for you. No, no, no. But he's traumatized by this. Yeah, but I am sorry. I always want to talk about like childhood. I, fears yeah, I didn't like, even derail things that you. Things spread but... to spread on into adulthood for me. Sure. Yeah, I'm 28 fucking years old. You know what I mean? Well, like, you sound so passionate about this that you love the movie be- for bringing this up. It's like I did weird... kind of, I did kind of like that. I, okay. I will say, like that's something that I was like, oh, shit. You know, like there's some little things that I was like, yeah, okay, that makes sense. One of the movies I think that always like preys on the childhood fears is the movie The Gate. If you've ever seen the movie, you need to watch that. We did a review of The Gate before. I I have we did one and that. two. Yeah. 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 I have definitely seen that. That one's one that's uh, really good for that. Yeah, but. I just I you know, there's not a lot of stuff cuz I was never really scared of things, but then you, you think now about like some of the stuff that still f- I don't want to do as an adult or I won't do as an adult like it's gotten easier over time for me to where I don't really give a fuck anymore you know right. but now I'm married and I always go to bed with my husband so it's like it's fine all you need is just a ghost to slap the foot of your bed and you'll be eight years old again I don't put my that, feet outside that's what happened bed. to me I do not put my feet outside my blanket over the side of my bed nope Never, ever in my life will do that. No one will do that. No one will do that. (laughs) And if they say they're okay with letting their feet hang off the side of their bed without a blanket around it, they're full of shit. (laughs) No one does that. Everybody's fucking scared of someone grabbing or touching your foot. Everyone. Everybody grows up with that fucking fear and they hold on to it for the rest of their life. They didn't do that in this movie, though. They didn't. I thought they were going to because they did the whole like air under the bed thing. And I'm like, oh, it's going to grab him. (laughs) (laughs) Fuck no. (laughs) Like it takes me back to like poltergeist, you know? Oh, well, that one's a good one. Yeah. Son of a bitch. (laughs) Even though like they play on that, but they don't do it. And it was fucking dope. So what did you think of the movie? Hated it. (laughs) fucking hated it while i like the fact that it did make me reflect on a lot of like weird childhood fears or right whatever that i had some of which carried on into adulthood that are kind of dissipating now right i hated the fuck out of this movie i was so fucking bored and it goes into this like weird i feel like i say i'm bored all the time but like there's no other way to say that i get bored yeah um well, see, every movie that you watch gives you a better basis to understand what's good or not. So Absolutely. the more you see, you'll... Absolutely. And I just, like, I have the same struggle with you a lot of times with, like, newer horror movies. Like, I'm just, like, been there, fucking done that. Like, do something else that's going to impress me. And they don't. That's why I, I like older films because I feel like they weren't exposed to a lot of shit. They have a reason. They have a fucking reason. You know, yeah. and I feel like they could have done so much more with this movie than they did and I was very disappointed with it. And it just gets it goes and gets fucking derailed. Like rent it goes fuck it goes weird. Like it just gets crazy and stupid but then at the same time it's kind of cool i don't know like, well it's I, I, a it's extreme contrast from the the original movie that we watched the the one from 1980 yeah. to this because it flows completely different you know and I, I looked at it and went oh, i'll probably like the movie from 2005 better just because it looks like it's put together it's easier a little bit to better, sit down but, and watch but it's also more bland yeah i mean it, and it was like i agree with you in the fact that it was shot very well yeah it was and it was it was pretty to watch but the story was stupid and i didn't i didn't it's just follow it everything well. felt like I it was, was just, just by the book i was struggling to pay attention yeah and i'm not gonna lie to you like i was struggling yeah and i have probably not struggled as much with anything else we've ever watched <laughs> until this movie. i didn't think it was i and mean i was surprised because it's a newer film so i felt like they should be able to they know this kind of stuff that people nowadays or even in 2005 which is not that long ago i think have more, lesser attention spans i think more people will have a harder time to watch the movie the first movie we talked about than this one depending this on how old they are this yeah depending on how old you are and, and how many movies you've seen or like what type of movies you've seen you might rotate to this one a little bit more because it's 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 done in a style that is more current to today because it was yeah, so I mean, con like the contrast because it flows a little bit better even though it's bland and boring and stylistically it's yeah cool. it does everything the same as any other movie that you've ever seen 
currently and borrows from older ones and just kind of like goes through the motions. But I don't know. It's just very bland. Like I'm, yeah. I'm really surprised that, that Sam Raimi and Robert Taffer. I can't, I, I don't, I refuse to believe it. I'm sorry. I, I, just, I don't, I think if you wanted to watch something, it's, it's a movie you can watch. It's not a movie I'll revisit. You know what I mean? It has nothing that really stands out. Yeah, to I me. will never watch this again. And we'll get into some of the spoilers a little bit after we do our trivia here. So you're going to want to stick around for that. Cause we got some funny shit. <laughs> it was to funny talk to about. me. Like what part made me, mouse remember that he'd seen it before oh he'd seen it he'd seen it okay and it like i'll get to it because that's one of my favorite scenes is actually like the part where he's like i think i've seen this and then like he's th- this happens and he goes oh yeah i've seen this movie <laughs> he remembers why but um there's not a whole lot of trivia for this movie okay i will though because we did talk about the budget for this film and you were like well this must have been terrible or whatever right opening weekend the film ranked number one and grossed a little under $20 million, wow. nearly equaling to production budget. It says 6.5 on the wiki, so I was kind of curious to yeah, see. Yeah, you know. uh, The film grossed $46 million, almost $47 million domestically, and twenty about almost $20.5 million internationally for a worldwide total of a little over $67 million, hmm. which is basically a box office hit, essentially. Which is weird, and Which that's why they made so weird, so many sequels. But yeah, this is why we get Boogeyman two and Boogeyman three that came after that. Uh. Which, um, cutely enough, Lucy Lawless, who was obviously a Xena warrior princess, who was in Boogeyman, even though it was all for like two minutes, um, her co star in Xena was Renee O'Connor, who was actually in the sequel. Or Boogeyman. The new she ones. She was in Boogeyman too. The newer ones. Yeah, I'm talking about the we new gotta ones. We got to be clear about, about that ones. so people don't get confused. And we're not talking about the old movie anymore, you guys. We're talking about the new one. So they have three <laughs> new movies. So mm-hmm. she was in the sequel to this. Yes, she was. And also uh, Barry Watson, who played his br- the guy who played his brother in Seventh Heaven, David Gallagher, has a small role in Boogeyman too as well. Really? Family matters. But the guy doesn't return, right? The one from the first one? Barry? Yeah. No, he doesn't come in in the second one. Something I thought was cute. This was originally released on VHS and DVD by Columbia TriStar in 2005. It was also later released by Sony Pictures in 2006 and again in 2010, both times as double features. What? Right. The the first release in 2006, they paired it with When a Stranger Calls. Okay. In the second release in 2010, they paired it with The Fog. Oh, the remake Fog. Yes. But still, both of which are insanely confusing to me as why they would be considered uh, double features. They were like, what do we have in together? stock? Let's just put it out. That's exactly how it feels to me. Well, the reason why is probably because they have to do that in order to keep the copyright and shit like that. Mm-hmm. Somehow, because I saw online on Amazon, you can buy the original, the the Boogeyman from mm-hmm. 1980, the return of Boogeyman, and all three of these, these yeah. for like 10 bucks for, yeah. on DVD right now. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, I was like tempted because I was like, I kind of want to see these, oh, both God. of these, but I just feel like it's going to get bad. Because one of the reasons I want to see the sequels to this is because the dude who played, I can't think of his name off the top, but the guy, the villain in Saw, is in the sequels Toby... to this. I can't, Tobin something. Toby, Tobin Bell. Tobin Bell, Tobin yeah. Bell. I love him. Yeah. Which one is he in? He's in both the second and the what? third. Pretty sure. I do love Tobin Bell, so I would check those out because of So him, I'm strictly. assuming that the, the first one of this is like a one-off, and then the other two are directly connected to one another. And they may all be connected in some way, but those two have him in it, so I'm assuming. Mm. So I'm curious, anyway. I'm curious. Is that all you had? Lucy Lawless for her part. She actually said that she loved, which is, she says is crazy. She loved playing the corpse in the coffin. Which is some of the worst makeup I've seen, oh, by the way. Ter- it's terrible. She talks about that again a little bit later in that interview. Um, But she said that she was very comfortable being the corpse. And she had particularly always dreamed of wearing a muumuu and lying in a padded box instead of in a corset laying in a pool of mud or blood. So <laughs> she was spending, like, this is easy money. Exactly. So to her, spending the afternoon inside of a coffin For was 10 grand. heavenly. Yeah. <laughs> 
heavenly. She probably exactly got paid ten grand it. for that. Oh, I'm film. sure. Yeah. Easily for her two fucking entire minutes of being in this movie. Maybe yeah. it's fifty grand. I don't know. Who knows? Um, that's where most of the budget went was for fucking Lucy Lawless. I'm sure. Yeah. But yeah, I just love the fact that her exact description of play, like being in a coffin was her whole experience was heavenly. And I'm like, <laughs> I fucking love her in a coffin. In her British ass fucking accent. Yeah. Like, oh, I didn't even know she was British. I didn't either. Yeah. Really, I always thought she was like American. She was all like, I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's racist. Sorry. What? <laughs> she does that in Zeta War. You're right. I'm what sorry. are you talking Zeta about? Warrior Princess. I fucking love Zeta. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I was always surprised because she always she always just speaks like plain American English. Yeah, well, a lot of we got a lot of British actors that are. Oh yeah, we do. That 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 do and a lot of American me. films. Every yeah. time like you have an actual interview with them and they're British as fuck, and I'm just like, oh, you're so cute. You're so much hotter <laughs> now with your fucking accent. I love it. Well, I had a little bit of trivia. The director of this film was actor for a lot of movies as well, yeah. too. He was in films like The Zero Boys, which is kind of like an action thriller horror movie. It was kind of interesting and looked up the trailer. Is that like the first one he acted in? Uh, or like one of the first Yeah, films? it was actually one of the first films yeah. that he acted in. And it's actually, I think it just came out from like Kino Lorber or some shit. Wow, okay. I can't remember. But um, he was also the director who is yelling at Danny Glover's character, Murtaugh, in the Lethal Weapon Shut 3, the fuck up. 3 movie. Yeah, Lethal Weapon 3 he was in, uh, where Mel Gibson's character Riggs attacks the director in the movie that she was shooting there was like some actors that were trying to like take her hostage and and he thinks it's like an actual crime going like live right there and so he like runs over tackles the guy and they're like hey you're ruining my scene the director and then i because i just watched these recently um i need to rewatch lethal i love those movies the director actually played a director who was treating the girl really poorly murtaugh's uh murtaugh's fucking daughter Mm -hmm. who there's always this weird thing with him and Riggs where his, you know, he Danny Glover's character thinks that yeah. Riggs is trying to hook up it's with like his It's like an ongoing theme. I think in that particular movie, she's older. And so he starts worrying about it because he's too old for this shit, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that guy, that's the director. God, I and movies. I was like, holy shit, I remember that part too. That's crazy. Yeah. Like, I, oh, I remember you watch it because I, all of those movies, I fucking love them. Like that, those are sequels done fucking right. I'm sorry. But yeah, yeah, there wasn't really a lot of trivia for this one, guys. Like, you know, we, we did actually some decent amount of digging to get what we got. So let's talk about our standout scene. I have like three. I mean, yeah, they're, they're like, really. I've got like two. So and right. that's literally it. One of the scenes that I was talking about earlier that I wanted to bring up was the beginning scene with the kid and his mm -hmm. father. One of the things that this kid does in the very beginning that I loved, the kid saw the coat move and then turned on the light. You see the the coat with a bat, and I was thinking to myself, like, why? What the fuck? Like, that's a really shitty. Like, why would the kid put his bat and his hood? <laughs> Good job, stupid. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> what the fuck is going on? And but then he turns the light back off, and it looks like a guy's standing there, which is exactly what a kid thinks. And what I remember as a kid, you know, and I thought that part was really cool and like reminded me. It took me back to that weird, morbid nostalgia that I have for the scary shit. And then when he turns off the light, it gets up and stands there and then he turns the light on again and it drops to the floor. He picks up the, the coat or the jacket or the like button up shirt. It's like a flannel shirt. Yeah. He puts it in a drawer. Then not only that, shuts it in the drawer, which is exactly what I would do, then drags a chair underneath the handle of the drawer so that it can't get out. And I was like, yes, I, I was like with that. You never see that in a movie. That I was, was all excited about it, too. Most non-typical trope of a very trope-tastic movie. So I don't know. That just stood out to me. I yeah. thought it was really cool. I agree with you. That was that's one of the scenes that I really, really just stood out and I loved it. I was like, maybe this isn't so bad. Maybe it's that's be what all I right. thought. I was so excited. And then it just was terrible. Well, and his dad like, gets he, like, yanked into the closet all fucking weird. <laughs> and that what they he was all smacking against the ceiling and shit and like coming out and smacking gets the sides in the ceiling and it was like a fucking shark eating him or something i'm like what the hell is going on they, they did do kind of a cheesy thing with it though like because like you don't see like instead of like them trying to cover what what it was like with cgi or something they kind of like did these weird cuts in there yeah I where like i was it. like 
Uh, I mean, it was effective, but it was cool. But it took me out of the the like the fun little nostalgia moments that I was in. Okay, you know, like I was just like, mm-hmm. it was just like it was weird. Like I guess they didn't want to show hands or what it was that yeah. was grabbing him. I guess. Yeah, but then I'm like, but I don't know your dad. Maybe right. he's an asshole. I don't care. He's getting sucked in a closet. Like. <laughs> Who gives he, a fuck? Wait, his dad was getting sucked in a closet? Yeah, he got sucked in a closet. Like, <laughs> real hard. It was like... Wow. This movie took a turn. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> but yeah, like that's why I was like, he didn't give me enough of a buildup to who the fucking dad is. Like, I don't give a shit about this guy. <laughs> like, And the kid's not nearly upset enough for the fact that his dad just got sucked in a closet. So, right. I don't know. That, was, that It took me out of it. But I did love the fact, like... All those little parts with the kid and like all the little shit that he did to try and like Put keep the boogeyman dr- yeah. from getting him was super cute and yeah. very accurate because it's all shit that I would have done as a kid too. Right, yeah. If I had experienced that. So uh, the next big standout scene to me, which is going to sound so stupid, um, was when the fucking crow flies into the car window. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. You like that or or you just thought it was stupid? I, thought, I was kind of like, what the fuck? What the fuck? Yeah, I went like, what the fuck? And then I laughed. Like, I'm just like, I look at it and I'm all, there is no fucking way in hell that that crow's beak is going to go through a fucking window <laughs> ever. It was like, going so fast. It was so fast. It defied gravity or whatever, like logic and science and something. I don't, I'm tired. I'm not going to get into like what it defied <laughs> specifically, but it defied all of reason to be, <laughs> to be able to like, Put its beak through a fucking like classic Mustang's window. That like, didn't even bother me. The part that freaked me out was like when he uses the windshield wipers to slide. I it laughed off, so hard, and then it made <laughs> a weird. Exactly what I would have done. It made a weird noise too, like it was still alive, even though it wasn't. <laughs> It was like, and I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> I was like, ew. I was like, don't touch it. Oh like, Oh, that's what I was saying. I was like, don't get a stick, fool. <laughs> the fuck? Like, I would have, like, uh, that's why I laughed so hard when he hit the windshield wipers is because that's exactly what I would have done. <laughs> Is hit the windshield wipers to try and like knock it loose because I'm sure as shit not gonna. Well, it's touch like it. its beak broke off in the w- in the window. <laughs> I I laughed so fucking hard it was so stupid and that was the scene that made Mouse realize he'd seen it. One of the one of the scenes <laughs> I that I that, that make boggles my mind a little bit here and I guess I don't know I'll explain it here but there was a part where in the beginning of the movie where he's grown up now obviously the older Young he's man. older now and he's like talking to his girlfriend which there is no absolutely zero. It uh, doesn't affection? make yeah. There's like it doesn't. None of it feels real. By mm-hmm. the way, like they're Completely acting disingenuous. Yeah, like for one, it just seemed like she wasn't a. I mean, I I guess what they were trying to do is like make her not be the one, you know, because that trope, you know. Yeah, because it's Kate, right? Because it's the girl that he runs into back home, <laughs> falls off the horse. Because his mother passes away, and he goes back home to trudge up all this bullshit. But he chooses. There's a part where he chooses to walk across the dark, scary fog filled park where apparently oh people yeah. love to hang out in the middle of the night in this dark fog like it's a fucking summer's and, day yeah and get raped and whatever people oh, are jogging something. and doing all that shit but first off <laughs> why in the fuck would a guy whose father got sucked in a closet as a kid go in the dark anywhere first of all that's exactly what i thought i'm like okay so because it's right after that is when we see his apartment right which is so weird because i thought well i was like well i guess they did it to sort of show that he's trying to conquer his fears. Yeah, but then you see his house. Right. Which, but they, I don't know. It just didn't feel right. No, stupid. That part really pissed I me like, off. Why I, I agree. It pissed me off too. Because that's instantly what I said was like, why the fuck would you go that way home, you idiot? He was like, no, I'll be all right. Who fucking does that? Like, who fucking does that? Right. I'm not going to walk through a weird, rapey, dark, foggy park. No, thank you. <laughs> I'm cool. Well, there's apparently families with their kids in the middle of the night. There's like a hundred cops and shit, too, because then they're interviewing some chick on the bench, and there's a bunch of cops with flashlights, like, looking through the park. Right. Like, quickly after the whole family walks through, and I'm like, what is going on? (laughs) What are they even trying to accomplish with this? So, okay, there's a (laughs) guy. The guy is at his mom's old house. He goes and he sees, like, the light in the closet flickering. And so he's scared of closets. So he goes to open the door slowly. He's scared. You can tell he's like reaching in really slow. He grabs the light bulb. He twists it and it stops flickering. And then there's this kind of like, you know, lighthearted moment. And immediately I knew what they were doing right there. I was like, I was like, he he plays this like flute and it's like this silly, oh, yeah, silly. Okay. He plays a like, what are they called? A recorder? The recorder. Yeah. It's yeah. Like that weird. Yeah. 
It's like a flute. And it's it, a little it, plastic it, one. It's essentially a tactic that they use in movies. That's It was plainly obvious. It was like I saw it coming from like a, a mile away. Yeah. It's a lower your guard moment for the viewer. And then the door slams and he gets attacked by the boogeyman. And he's like flailing and swinging his arms. And he's like, you know, there's shortcuts of like weird like faces and like you know, the lights flickering and like all this like crazy shit. And then all of a sudden he he uh, a shadowy hand reach really bad CGI yep. shadowy hand reaches out. And all of a sudden he busts out of the closet. <laughs> and at this moment, I was like, I turned to Christina. I was like, see, this is what it's like coming out. You know what I mean? Right. And she <laughs> I, I, I was like, but seriously, this like, is an accurate interpretation of coming out of the closet. Yes, exactly. And I'm not making fun of anybody who has. Absolutely. I couldn't help but think that the whole fucking movie, though, because because otherwise the movie is so typical, it's ridiculous. So it I, is, I was trying to spin my own tail. Yeah, good for you. <laughs> so good for you. Yeah. Is so you closet? really have no other favorite Sorry. things no, or standout parts? I really don't. One thing. Like, uh, one thing I really liked, and you don't, I, you didn't, you didn't like the parts where he would go in the closet and then come out some other closet. <laughs> you, you don't remember that? No. Did you finish it? I did. They did it like five times. I did. I like I said, I got totally lost. Like watching, I was just okay. like, what is fucking happening? Like, and all the shit with the little girl, I was like, what the fuck is going on? He leaves his mom's house because he's scared. His girlfriend shows up and she's like really selfish and like always talking about herself. And then he goes to a hotel and she's like trying to hit on him. And she's like, I'm going to draw a bath and like get ready. You go get a bucket of ice. And then he goes back in the room and she's nowhere to be found. And he's like, where the fuck did she go? So he looks naturally in the, the closet, goes in and comes out the closet in his mom's house. So he like he just reappears there right. somehow and it's like time is different too so i thought that was kind of interesting it was like monsters inc in this it movie. always ends up leading him back to where he's most afraid right every time and like i don't know like to me i was just like okay it, i mean it is kind of other than that and like the beginning of the movie it's pretty typical and it like, absolutely yeah. is i'm just like there's nothing new about this it's all the same rehashed shit there really isn't much more to say about this movie. No, it's so sad. I, I really think it's kind of like a 4.5 for I'd a give movie. It like a three. Like I would never I probably I would probably give it a four, actually, because I usually a movie that's around a five, I will usually watch again, again. At some point. And I haven't seen the sequels to this, although I'm mildly curious if I didn't have to buy them. Tobin Bell's in them, then maybe. Right. So I would say that. In the end, I think the original movie, uh, The Boogeyman, with completely different stories and dealing with mirrors is is just a little bit better than that movie, even though this one follows more of a typical following plot yeah. that you can kind of follow along while the other one is all over the place, but it's got like these little pieces that are kind of interesting. Yeah. The like two- a broken mirror. The 2005 version is definitely more along the lines of the entire urban legend of a boogeyman. And then the 1980 version is not at all. And it's basically just like this weird mirror fucking monster thing. And it's it's this whole original idea on its own. And it feels like it's just trying to capitalize on the name. I, I agree. And I really wish they would have marketed it as something different. So and not tried to play on this like whole boogeyman thing because it's marketing. It is marketing. It's yeah. exactly what it is. And, you know, whatever. They did a really good job. So who gives a fuck? <laughs> it fucking worked out. So good job, guys. Yeah. <laughs> I'd say if you guys, so much money. <laughs> if you guys have a, a high threshold for like '80s movies, uh, I would say watch the first, the original 1980, uh, the book, bo- the Boogie Spaceman. I liked it. This one is more of like, hey, if you're bored and you got nothing else to do, watch it. Don't watch it. I, again, I mean, I'm not trying to pick on anybody, but it just didn't. It uh, the CGI ruined the end for me. Oh my god, that he was, was the like worst. the most ridiculous version of fucking Voldemort from Harry Potter. Well, and like, that's and, exactly what it reminds me of. And it's based off all the things that he saw. It's terrible. He was made of all the different so things like that his, scared him as a child. Yeah, and then it's like his weird fucking uncle and like that whole side story that, that was they weird brought too. into it which made no fucking sense at all. I, like I I didn't understand why the fuck they went I don't know. Like that felt like a weird cop out to me. So I just I didn't get it. It didn't feel like well thought out. It was so stupid. Like I just it went from like one I don't know. 
Anyway, they went for a traditional scare and they executed that part well, but it just wasn't. Uh, they tried to throw their own yeah. flair, but they should have thrown more flair in there. The they whole give time. you, they do a great job of giving you enough little bits and pieces of the quote unquote boogeyman right. to keep you interested throughout the entire movie, right? So then when you finally get to that climactic moment when they give you the fucking creature, you're ready. You're ready to see some fucking terrifying ass, weird ass fucking thing. And then it's literally this, you know, well conceptually stepchild of Voldemort and he looks fucking stupid. And well, you're not like you're just like, what the fuck is that? Like I said, it's it, you know, conceptually the idea of mishmashing all these things the idea is great. as a kid who was scared of the bird, the coat, the the little man that he had on his desk that was like a figurine. Well, and that's apparently what controls the entire thing. Right. All these little pieces and then and then like his little globe, the shocking globe that everybody had when they were a kid. Mm-hmm. Uh, he smashes all these things and that's what kills the boogie man so yeah and, and, and which is you know like conceptually like it seems like a good idea but then again none of that scares every single one of the viewers so while they do a decent job of kind of expressing the fear in the very beginning it all falls apart by the end of the movie absolutely and it is not worth the payoff in that respect oh and I even love... though the idea is somewhat interesting it's mildly entertaining mildly and i love the very obvious play on to there will be sequels Sam Raimi, like I said before, has, you know, has had some not so great films. Well, I was very surprised that he was involved with this at all. I would. Th- yeah. It doesn't would. feel like Sam Raimi, period. I bet you he probably I'll tell you what, I bet you he had influence over the because if it was Rob Tappert and us and Sam Raimi, they probably had their cinematography guy come in and do the fucking shots. And that's, that's why the only we, thing that feels like them to me. That's why we got those cool shots in there. Otherwise, this movie would have been even worse Complete than it was. Garbage. Yeah. I don't want to go on and on about this movie, but guys, I don't know if you've seen it. If you have, I would definitely let us know what you think of these movies. Uh, The first one, the last one. Which one do you like better? Why? Let us know in the comments section. We always love hearing from you guys about this stuff. So we want to know your opinions just as much as ours because it's interesting. Absolutely. To put this much effort into two films and especially one of which that you're like, oh, God, what do I say? Yeah. (laughs) But guys, thank you so much for coming by this week. If you haven't already, please share this episode with someone that you think might enjoy it or your friends. We greatly appreciate that. That is how we reach new people to enjoy this with you guys. So thanks again. And as always, stay weird, monsters. Tune in every Monday for a brand new episode.